Right, well while at work today I came across a leather chair that somebody had dumped. It was damaged leather chair. And uh, so I went to, to the van and I got the first aid kit out of my bag. Which I always take to work with me. And I got out of that the scissors and I cut a bit off this chair so it's a bit of chrome tanned leather I couldn't get much this was just a flap that was on it and I was at work so I couldn't spend too much time but uh, it gave me an idea of something to make something that will benefit both me and the dog because uh, the dog likes me to throw a ball for her so I'm just thinking if I can make a shepherd's sling that will launch this ball further than I can ordinarily throw it, it will give me a bit more rest and her a bit more exercise. Here, fetch it here. Fetch it here then. Fetch it here. Fetch it here. It might also give me use for these uh, golf balls, which I used to find when I was out with the previous dog. But uh, one thing you don't want to do with golf balls is launch them at something solid because they'll come back at you at the speed you launched them at. Right, so that's the project then, so we'll see how that goes. Right, so there are many different ways to make a shepherd's sling. There are also many different ways to use it. So <clears throat> I got the leather which gave me the idea, so I'm going to use leather as the, as the pouch, but I, I don't have to do that. So once I've got the pouch, my concern is what I use as the, as the, as the string. Now I've got some 3mm paracord here which I really think that's too thin and I've got this which I really think is too thick. So I'm just going to go with the paracord for now and uh, a a another variable is the length. So I'm just going to initially give myself too much length and the length I want to finish off with is, is, my, is my arm span. Uh, but there's some knots to take into account. And then if all I had was cord, I could make the pouch out of the cord in the middle by doing some, uh, some weaving and some, some fancy knots in there, I think, which I'm, I'm not sure of. Uh, put that through there and, and mess about. But we're not doing that, we're, we're using the leather. So I think if I if I give myself a good hand stretch out and then a little bit more for the knots, I think that should be enough. So I don't like wasting anything and <laughs> so I don't want to, I don't want to make it too too short but if I made it too long I'm wasting a bit but if I make it too short I'm wasting even more aren't I? So that, we'll call that for the cord then uh, and we'll come back to that come back to that later. So for the pouch I'm doing, you'll see what I'm doing, I'm going to do two simple strips of leather 
And now the size of them, well the size of them is to some extent dependent on what you intend to hurl with this. Now a, a tennis ball on its own is going to be very light but I want it for tennis ball size. This is actually quite dense, uh, like a silicon sort of rubber. Uh, so I want it for that size and that's a, that's a good weight for hurling I think. I did originally think uh, what am I going to do with all these golf balls and that's probably a good size but they, they're actually quite light golf balls so I don't know whether we'll get away with them but, and they're certainly not for the dog they're just about right choking size for the dog so that's not for the dog but uh, so anyway we'll, we'll come back to that it's all a load of variables isn't it so what I'm going to do is two strips of leather then straight forward two strips of leather so I'll start off with a with a square so I know we've got square corners and uh, <coughs> I can't find my plastic set square so I've just got a piece of aluminium here just to start me off with a square a, a 90 degree if you like yeah, maybe that's not ideal you learn and you modify as you go along but be prepared for it not to work the first time because the first time is really just a learning process and I have never made a shepherd's sling before so this is a learning process Right, get the leather out of the way. Now what the idea is, is can you see that? That forms a pouch, doesn't it? If you put, say this is the front one and this is the back one. There. And then bring the back one to the front there. Actually I've got the pouch. I've got the pouch inside out now haven't I? Okay. And that's it just just doesn't matter, just tap it in. And then it forms a bit a bit of a pouch. Perhaps these are a bit too wide. I think these might be a touch wide. I might just take a touch off them. You want to contain your projectile but you want it to release easily so it's a balance between it being held firmly in there and it wanting to come out. Right now I need to put holes in the end of each one so we can put the cordage through. So I want to get those holes fairly uniform Oh, where do we want the hole? We don't want it too close to the edge. If hmm, okay, if I well, let's just let's just eyeball it, shall we? Let's just eyeball it. Just eyeball it about there, and I'll round the corners off. So I'll put it about there, and I'll round the corners off. So what's that about? Three eighths in. Three eighths in. There's not, I'm, not, I'm not chucking big rocks with this so there's not going to be a tremendous amount of force on it. And if it breaks we'll know either the leather wasn't thick enough or uh, it was too close to the end. Right, wall punch. Right, so I've got the holes cut. Uh, I'm just going to chamfer the corners round. Just 
do I put a ball in in it uh, which won't crimp up too much or do I put a double fisherman's in it I don't know it's probably a, an ideal knot that I'm don't know, I don't know many knots. I just know enough knots just to get by with. So, do I go? Well, it shouldn't really matter, should it? Yeah, with a double. I think we we'll put a double fisherman's in it. So I'm just going around the back side. So we take it through. I'm taking it round once, round again. And then back up through its through those loops. Double fisherman's. That's what I'm doing. You can't you can't see it here. I'd have to do it close up. It's, uh, it's not about knots. It's about a shepherd's sling. Well, <laughs> you could argue that without the knot you wouldn't have a shepherd's sling. But right. So what we're doing is we're putting a double fisherman's in it. So I'm just going. That's me working line there. So I'm taking the tag end round the back of the working line. So completely round once, completely round again. So you've got these two loops and now I'm putting that tag end through those two loops and pulling it up tight. And here's the dock to see what I'm doing. And then I'll go like that. And then we have the makings there of a pouch. Hopefully. Right. So I'll find roughly the centre of this. It should be too long at the moment, way too long. But I've got some knots to tie yet. So I found the centre there center and I've got a loop to tie on one end and a knot to tie on the other so I'll tie the loop first how long where do I want this loop I'm better off with this being a little bit shorter than longer. Um, from what I've read, longer will give you more power, but shorter will give you more accuracy. Um, accuracy doesn't matter too much, but you never know. So we'll go a little bit shorter. So we're talking our loop there. So what am I going to do for the loop? Just bend it over and tie a, I think I'll tie a ball in it because I don't want it constricting up around my finger so I'll tie a ball in so what's that that's all right well I tie a ball in like this there's little stories about the rabbit going around the back of the tree down the hole up the hole and all the rest of it but I'll go I'll t t put it over the main line fold it over on itself so the rabbits come up through the hole, gone around the back of the tree and back down through the hole and then we can cinch that up and then I've got a knot there that won't constrict however hard you pull on this line this knot will not constrict uh, and that's about right I think so now I want a knot on the other end at the same length. 
same length put there. So what I'm going to put on here is a figure of eight knot. I could be fancy. Uh, I could do the Celtic button knot, but I'm not sure how to do it. Uh, so I'm just going to do a figure of eight. And a figure of eight is just goes if you tie in a single uh, simple knot, but instead of tying the simple knot, go around once more and through. I'm trying to keep my lengths the same. So it forms a figure of eight. I don't know whether you can see that. You probably can't see that. I might cover these. I might cover some knots in a in a future video. I might cover some knots in a future video. So let's have a look. So we'll just have a rough check. That looks central when I'm holding it out. And where will that go? That'll go there. So that's that's looking reasonable. It's looking reasonable. It's looking reasonable, isn't it? Eh? <laughs> so now we've just got to try it. Trim it up a bit, of course. It needs a bit of trimming. So trim it up, uh, and we'll go out and and we'll try it. Right then, it's a bit windy. And the light's a bit poor, but I've got my sling, shepherd's sling, this is it. And to start off with, because we don't know what's going to happen, we're going to use something that's not too dangerous, the dog's ball, which is what this is built for anyway. So, let's have a look, I'm getting the loop finger first and I'm putting it on my middle finger, back of my middle finger. Slide it through to the knot, held in my other finger and my thumb. Put it in the pouch and it's held reasonably tightly. Now <laughs> we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know whether I can release it, whether it'll go in the right direction or what, so let's have a look. Are you watching? Because you've got to go and fetch this. Well that didn't go too far, but the first few shots, we're not worried about accuracy, we're not worried about power, we're just going to get the feel of it. Fetch it here. Fetch it here. Fetch it here. Right. Okay, I'll, I'll give you a from a behind shot because it's it's getting the release. Uh, I think you've not got to think about it. I think it's like throwing a stone. You've just got to do it. Uh, we'll give you a, a from behind shot. Fetch it here. Well that's going to wear the dog out in no time. 
So I'm going to have to restrict it a little bit, but uh, I think we're getting the hang of it and I've, well, I've only had a few shots. Good dog. Now then, one more. One more. Last one. Last one. Last one. That's tremendous for wearing the dog out. Absolutely tremendous. And uh, it doesn't take much getting used to either. Covered in sand. Right. Battery's about done. So I'm going to play a bit, get some wood, and. Uh, Disappointing about the um, about my holiday, but you've got to make the most of what you've got. So at least we're back at the South Gate, place I love being at. So does the dog. So I'll catch you in a week or so. Probably see you again down here at the South Gate on the northeast coast of England, between Redcar and Hartlepool. So sure.